Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Fury Bee Toad 90. This is a bind and fly model that is available in DSMX, Fly Sky, or FR Sky. But this time around it doesn't look like they're offering a plug and play model. And that kind of blows because from the looks of it, it might be a little difficult to change out the receivers. Stay tuned to find out why. This 90mm micro is constructed with 1104 motors. BL Heli S ESCs and F3 flight controller with OSD, an all in one CMOS camera with built in 25 milliwatt VTX, and of course, your choice of receiver. First off, let's do a quick unboxing to see what's all included. This is the box that it comes in pretty much your standard plain Jane looking box. Open her up. It's pretty much information on how to bind your quad to your radio and there's also information on how to set some things up in Betaflight. Next up we have some propellers. These are 1935 five bladed props and you get two full sets. Prop guards with included longer screws. You also get some tools. Actually a good spec battery. It's a 2 cell 450 milliamp with ADC discharge, which I've already swapped the JST for an XT30 connector. Alright, let's take a closer look at the Toad 90. So this is how it arrives with the props already installed for you, as well as the battery strap, which is not my favorite when it comes to battery straps. But it is already installed on there. I mean, if it were not, you would have to take the flight controller off just to install the strap. So I really can't complain. Before we move on, let's see how much this thing weighs. Alright, first up, the quad without a battery. 70 grams. Let's see how much this weighs with the battery. hundred and two grams by the battery battery by itself 31 grams let's just round it up to let's, let's just say 100 grams for both the battery and the quad so definitely not bad and with the propellers or the prop guards on can add another four grams I would say five grams whatever four to five grams I'll start off with the motors and work my way around to show all the different parts. These are Happy Model branded 1104s and they are 7500 kV. I've actually never heard of them before but they do look and feel like a good set of motors. And we'll see how they perform after I get a couple flights in. The bell does feel nice and solid, there's no up and down play. And connected to the motors are some 1935 five blade props which should perform well. Just keep in mind, more blades usually mean more amp draw and power, but less flight time. And as far as durability goes, it's not the greatest either, which is probably a good thing that there are two full sets included in this pack. Alright, I'm just going to remove the props so you get a better shot of the motors. Ooh, nice and shiny. It's cool. And it has four holes to make it easier to find the holes when you install the props. The motor wires have heat shrink wrapped around to prevent it from getting caught up in the blades, so nice touch there. When you have the toad in your hand for the first time, you'll probably notice how solid it feels. I think it has a lot to do with just how thick the main plate is. Let's see how thick it measures. I have a pretty cheap caliper, so just give or take 1.1 millimeters. So let's say 2.5 millimeters for the main plate. Very little flex in the arms. Alright, now let's measure the top plate. Let's round this to 1.5 millimeters. Moving right along, let's check out this camera. But before I talk about the camera, I just wanted to mention that the camera up tilt is very limited. You can see that the antenna comes in contact with the frame, which prevents you from using a higher up tilt. It arrives with the camera pointing directly forward. Unless you plan on only hovering the quad, you're not going to have any issues. But if you plan on flying fast, well, yeah, it's going to be a drawback. Anyways, this is an all-in-one camera and VTX combo. For the camera portion, it's got a 600 TVL resolution with a quarter inch CMOS sensor and directly connected to the back is a 25 milliwatt VTX with 48 usable channels. The specs state that it should be able to reach ranges of up to 200 meters. There are two buttons on this. 
The button on the front will change video modes from NTSC and PAL as well as flip the picture. The rear button changes channels and bands by either using a long press or short press. With the four screws loosened, you can now adjust the camera's up tilt and as you can see, by not very much. And with the top plate removed, this will give you access to the three level stack. This consists of a 4-in-1 ESC, the flight controller, and the top level is actually the FR Sky receiver. And this includes the buzzer as you see. I didn't even realize what it was when I first looked at it. This is an FR Sky D8 receiver and what irks me about this is it's actually soldered onto the flight controller using two pins on the side and three pins in the front. Unless you don't mind cutting the pins, this is what I meant when I said it's not going to be easy to switch it out. But I have no issue with this, so let's move on. Right below the receiver, we have an Omnibus F3 flight controller that comes flashed with Betaflight version 3.2, which is definitely good. There's a lot of new features that come with 3.2 and newer. And I'm going to run through the Betaflight settings and just change a few things to get it more to my liking. If you like to arm with a switch and also have the motor spinning as soon as you arm, go ahead and uncheck these two boxes. And then under system configuration, what I do first is set both the PID loop and gyro rates to max just to see if it will, it will run okay. If the CPU load stays under 35%, then you should be fine. In the Toad's case, the maximum it will run is 8K gyro and 4K PID loop. If you fly in any mode other than acro, you're going to want to leave accelerometer checked on. And we don't need barometer, so we can go ahead and remove that. And under other features, the only setting that you're actually going to be using is the OSD. So you can remove the LED strip. Also, if you plan on using black box, make sure you check that one or turn that one on. As for everything else on this page, I'm just going to leave it as is. And don't forget to save. All right, so PID tuning. It looks like they just use the stock Betaflight settings, uh, which should be fine. Uh, but usually I like to change things around just a little bit. And here is my settings. All I did was adjust a few numbers around under P, I, and D. And then I increased the rates. At the time of this recording, I haven't tested how these fly yet. But I'm assuming they should be good. But if not, then I'll re-record this. Otherwise, I'll just leave this as is. Under this page, it's a good idea to make sure your radio is trimmed. To do this, first make sure your props are off the quad and power it on, and then turn your radio on. If your quad is already binded, you should be able to see the bars move in accordance with the corresponding sticks. Make sure all the sticks are centered, and then using the trim buttons on your radio, get all the numbers on the screen as close as possible to 1500 or center, and then hit save. One other thing, make sure the channel mapping is the same as what you have on your radio. If you've left your Tyrannus stock, it should work fine. For me, I need to change it back to AETR. And under the modes tab, this is going to be how I like to set things up. So yours probably will be different than mine, but you can use mine too. First, I like to have ARM as its own switch. In case of an emergency, like if I lose picture during FPV flying, I can easily get to the flight mode switch and turn horizon mode on just so that I don't end up flying straight into the ground. And the last one I used to turn on the buzzer. And as you can see, I set them all using their own switch. And the last thing you might want to change out is the OSD or some of the features on the OSD. I try to keep things at a bare minimum like uh, voltage, uh, the timer, flight mode. And that's pretty, that's pretty much what I usually use. All right. And underneath the flight controller, we have a 4-in-1 BL Heli S ESC. By the way, all these boards are using the 20 by 20 millimeter mounting holes. This BB2 ESC is rated at 10 amps with burst rates of up to 15 amps. It is using BL Heli S firmware 16.5 and is capable of running up to DSHOT 600 protocol. On the product page, it states that you can run 1 to 2S LiPos. My guess is that this is an error and it was supposed to say 2S to 3S LiPos. When I go out and test fly it, I'll be testing both 2 and 3S batteries. So I'll let you guys know if anything burns out. 
but I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh wow, I think that was the last component. Actually, one last thing. This quad actually comes with a JST connector. I've already swapped on an XT30 and it's totally not necessary. It's just it's just that all my batteries use XT30, so I I figured I'd switch this one over too. All right, so aside from a few minor annoyances like the soldered on flight controller, limited camera up tilt and crummy battery strap, I think Oh, and the strange name. Why would it be called Toad? I feel like it's such an ugly name. But I suppose to each their own. Maybe maybe this was meant for people who like Toads. Anyways, I think the Toad 90 is looking like a great little micro. We will find out how true this is in my next video when I go out for some test flights. And with that being said, thanks very much for watching. See ya.